What's up guys and welcome back to Machine Zinc. Right now we are driving the van up to the local metal supply yard and we're going to pick up some plate and some tubing for some projects, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so we came across to come grab some metal at the metal yard and came across this rad uh, limo land cruiser, so I'll let the owner kind of give us a run through of it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for stopping by. That's about the fun of it because people smile. So it's a 1996 Lexus LX450 that was sold off the lot in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn and built into this stretch limo. And then about 10 years ago, Slee Off-Road and Golden bought it, put on a 6 inch lift, front bumper, winch, snorkel, 48 gears. It has the factory lock and rear differential. Uh, it's a Spicer one-ton drive shaft that was built that way, so now we're just having fun with it. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, thanks for showing it to me. This thing's rad. <laughs> it makes people smile. That's Heck yeah. Cool. Have you guys ever taken it off-road? A little bit of dirt roads, not like any serious four-wheeling yet. We're yeah, yeah. the king of the hammers. Oh, Baja you bringing Designs. this? Yeah, Baja Designs Lights is going to light us up, and we're going to be out there in February. So we're Heck yeah. rebuilding the roof rails. It's got a little bit of rust, but the frame is solid. All right, guys, we are back from the metal yard and back in the garage. Uh, Daniel, thanks for giving us a walk around of that sweet Land Cruiser that you have. Uh, and if any of you guys are going to be out at King of Hammer, sounds like that Land Cruiser limo is going to be out there as well. So if you find it, tag me in it, send a post, that'd be rad. So the reason we went to the metal yard is I wanted to pick up some plate to be able to build some belly skids for the Jeep XJ. Uh, so I just got some 316, it's like hot rolled mild steel plate. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a skid plate that mounts on the new cross member that we put on all the way back to cover the transfer case and the exhaust. So hitting some gnarlier trails, if I land on anything, it's not gonna rip anything off. Uh, we were actually in Moab doing Pritchard Canyon last summer with my buddy Kerry. He came down and landed on his exhaust and it was fine. We saws out it off and finished the trail, but listening to that thing straight pipe the rest of the day was not too much fun. So I don't wanna be in that place. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna start off with some poster board that I have and we're gonna start chopping this up to kind of get an idea of what shape and size we want and then we'll trace that over onto our hot plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mocking this whole thing up, give you guys a little montage of it, and uh, enjoy the show. got it all mocked up uh, test fit it fits decent so I'm gonna go ahead and tack everything together test fit it one more time and then we can pull it off to finish weld and uh, paint it and be done with this thing All 
Alright guys, so it is the next night and it is cold. Uh, right now, about my house, it's about negative 10. Uh, so we're out here, I got my, uh, my heated vest going. Uh, I got my heater in the garage going. So sorry if you guys hear that buzzing in the background, but not willing to turn that off right now. So, getting back on this skid play project. Initially, I want to come out here today and try to weld this thing all up. But there's two things that I need to weld. A, ventilation to open the garage and B, my 220 outlet to run the welder. Uh, considering how cold it is, I do not want to open the garage, and considering the 220 outlet is what's powering my heater, I really don't want to unplug that right now. So, instead of welding this thing up, we're just going to get going on trying to figure out some more fitment things. Um, first off, this front edge right here is actually what butts up against the cross member, the transfer case cross member, and there's going to be three bolts that go across and I haven't decided if I'm gonna do bolts or studs yet um, but I do need to line that up and drill those so I can go ahead and knock that out um, then past that I am gonna clean up these edges I'm gonna go ahead and round them off and uh, drill some holes for bolt holes and then lastly I'm gonna do some bracing inside of here uh, essentially just some ribs I'm thinking one across here one across here and then one across the back since this whole inside portion is unsupported, I want to try to brace it to those outside portions as much as possible, um, just to give it enough strength to where if I do land right here in the corner, it's not going to want to bend that up and out of the way. So, like I said, it is definitely a cold one, uh, but we still got work to do, and I want to go ahead and get this project knocked out. All right, so to transfer these holes over, the first process I'm going to try is I'm going to take some masking tape, tape across the back, trace the whole cross member on it with a sharpie and mark where the holes are, see if I can take that piece of tape off and then apply it to the skid plate and transfer those marks over. Sweet, now we just gotta go apply that over to the skid plate. Alright guys, so pretty much got everything I can do other than welding it together. So got my welding jacket on. It is still obviously absolutely freezing outside, but what I'm going to do is just crack the garage, start welding until I get so cold I can't stand it out here anymore, and I'll call it a night. So I'll kind of start by welding up the inside. Uh, I also went ahead and got some braces set up on the inside just out of some angle iron. Um, so I'll get those all tacked in start doing some of like kind of the stitch welding on all the main like corner joints um, and I assume after probably about 15-20 minutes I'm gonna be freezing and want to go inside like I said it's about negative 10 degrees right now um, so we'll see how long I last but I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera on a tripod and go to town welding All right, well, I was fortunate enough to be able to stay out long enough to get this whole thing done. So went ahead and welded the whole thing up. Uh, it was kind of nice since it was so cold. The same didn't stay so hot, and I was able to go ahead and weld pretty much all of it um, without getting it too hot and it warping. But still took my time, you know, just doing sections of weld and moving around, um, not to put too much heat in one area. But yeah, I'm stoked. It turned out decent. Went ahead and drilled the bolt holes on here um, to be able to mount it up to the frame. So now, pretty much just going to toss it up and go ahead and give this thing a coat of paint um, to protect it. And then we will roll the Jeep in here, drill and tap those holes on the frame, and install this thing.
All right, guys, so we finally got this belly skid bolted up and I am stoked how it turned out. It sits super flush right with that transmission cross member, bolts up super easy and it's easy to uh, install and remove for serviceability. Just fit and finish of it came out great and I think it looks pretty beef, so hopefully we'll see how it holds up on the trail. Uh, I am actually gonna take this thing out to a trail tomorrow, I think. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm gonna slam on those old rock sliders and try to get this thing ready to get out of the garage. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked how it turned out. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, share, and I really appreciate you guys watching and following along with this build series. So until the next one, I'm Jake with Machines Incorporated. Thanks for watching. I'm getting out of this. <laughs>